Thank you so much for doing this interview with me here at the List Gallery. Of course, we are in Yorkville for this uh, special exhibit that's going to be coming up. But uh, you're talking to me while you've got your, your workers and your friends here all helping to put this up right now. So thank you so much for making the time down. No, thanks for coming down. It's all a process. It really is a process. Um, you know, one of the things I never realized is when you are setting up an exhibit, even just putting up or setting up the exhibit itself, it's, it's a science. You've got to make sure everything is done right, the lighting is right. I mean, how do you do all this? Uh, I don't do all of it. Uh, List Gallery is handling it, but when you're installing sculpture, and these are wall sculptures, a lot of them, it is a, it is a little more complicated than installing painting. But yeah, you have to compose which pieces go where, which relate to which, how they relate to the lighting, all of that. How did you get into becoming an artist in this form? Uh, I didn't actually choose it. Uh, <laughs> I love the way you paused for a second. It was like, wow, that's a loaded question. <laughs> that's a loaded question. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how it evolved. I grew up on uh, working on my grandparents' farm in Kansas part-time. And uh, my father was a minister, my mother was a teacher. Uh, I was supposed to be an English professor in Chicago, uh, but I moved up to Canada and my wife at that time was a doctor, wanted to practice in a socialized system, so I went to OCAD and studied sculpture. And I realized that what I wanted to do was put together narrative elements that I had been studying uh, when I was studying literature. And I'm gonna stop you there, what does that mean? Uh, story, it's some kind of story elements connecting human culture to the earth. I wanted to combine those two things because I saw with the digital age and all these other things happening and having grown up uh, partly Mennonite, that a lot of our culture is losing touch with nature. We exist in environments that don't have strong connections to nature. Most of our population is urban now. And uh, so this disconnection between urban experience and rural experience, uh, urban experience and nature, is something that I started exploring. I went to OCAD, my, I respond to my environment. So my initial work, which is on this wall, certain pieces, I had a warehouse studio in uh, Toronto, and these are two of 15 drawings that make one large drawing called Plan that I did over architect's drawings when I was in one of those old warehouse studios with all the clanging pipes above and all that kind of thing. And so I was responding to my environment and I did these drawings, like what's the plan in terms of how is the city developing? What would a map of what's under the streets of the city look like if we imagined it? Like say a kid is imagining that map under the streets of all the wires and the pipes I drew an urban song line. That's where that piece came from. Um, at the same time, I started exploring things related to climate change. Uh, I would, my son's a filmmaker making films about that, one of them, and I was exploring themes around climate change. And so I started playing with the story of uh, the ark. Uh, in a way, which is a story across all cultures that has to do, and actually historically true in a certain form, with issues of climate change. Because we live in a period like that now, and we are slowly absorbing it. As books come out that say the waters will come, um, uh, the rebuilding of the civilized world around coastal areas across the planet. So this is the biggest story of our time. So what happened at a certain point is I grew up rural and I wanted to have a place in the country to work to try to connect back to the, the Canadian wilderness. So I ended up with this uh, 5,000 square foot overturned ship of a building out east of Peterborough that looks like an overturned ship. And I started doing works there that I wouldn't have done if I had stayed living in the city. I wouldn't have done them. I, uh, I did one years ago at my warehouse. I, made, I used a mold making process and I made a piece from a tree because all the trees were going on a big development that, that was coming in. And then that piece that I made just sat there until one day I put it on a fence 
in front of an abandoned warehouse vacant lot area. And I noticed that light shone through it. And it looked kind of like an x-ray of the surface of that tree when the light shone through it. And then that just kind of sat there for a while because I didn't know what to do with it. But it, the piece felt like human skin, like connected to something that was related to the skin of the tree or the spirit of the tree. And so for a number of years that sat there. And then I started doing that in the landscape around my studio when I moved out. I started making pieces off of old, uh, vintage, sort of historical cedar strip canoes. I started creating a portrait of Canada. It could be a portrait of the United States too. I, I started creating a portrait of North America. So I started making pieces using this process off of old canoes, which is how everybody got around this country before all the dry rivers called roads were built. And I started making pieces off trees and peeling them off and lighting them. I started working on abandoned farmhouses where people couldn't make a living anymore, old lath walls in old buildings, uh, and rock faces along rivers because the water levels were fluctuating all the time. And so I was creating a, a geographic map in a way through these sort of um, x-rays of the landscape that had elements of the tree, elements of the canoe, the process prints. It's like relief sculpture. Uh, I've done things th that are beyond that also, but this show is like relief sculpture, x-rays of the landscape made in this way. Um, and I started peeling them off and then exploring with LED lighting systems, how I could control the light behind them. And I started making a series until I had a building that I was calling an ark after a show I did under the Manhattan Bridge in New York when I took a boat out of Georgian Bay, a big fishing boat, and I gutted and sandblasted it as a performance work and I pierced it with giant utility pipes like a walking boat whale kind of composed like Garrico's Raft of the Medusa, yeah. right? That famous painting, I composed the pipes that way, and it was under the Manhattan Bridge for a summer in New York City. That was the piece. So I was playing with this idea of arc, kind of like a folk artist. I started collecting all the old water meters from under the city, because I was fascinated by them. They're replacing all of them, of course, with a newer system. These are turn of the century, early, uh, early 1900s, cast iron, way too heavy for what we need now. They look like Vietnamese pot-bellied pigs. They weigh 500 pounds each, and I'm hauling them around in the back of my pickup truck, like creating this industrial herd based on Toronto, which should be a public artwork in Toronto somewhere. They're brilliant, and I may make molds off them, whatever. But I was doing things like that. But again, I was playing with the idea of the ark. I was collecting my animals. I grew up on a farm. They're in my barn now. It's full of light works that are much larger than the ones in this gallery that are hanging like sails everywhere with light behind them. It's a museum in the middle of nowhere that's more interesting than like half of what they show at any of the museums in the city. And I'm waiting for it to move in. So this show is an opportunity. It's the first time these works have been shown in Toronto. Um, it's a process that, I mean, there are major artists that I admire a great deal, like Andy Goldsworthy and Giuseppe Pannoni, and artists working on a level I could only dream of, right, full time. But this work relates to that work. And there isn't anyone else that I know of using this process to explore this theme in this way uh, in my various researches. Now, you have an example of what you were just talking about because as I turn the camera, we, we, we have sort of like a backdrop here, but if we go in, we'll have a chance. Well, why don't we go in? Let's, let's take a look. I'm going to actually be turning off the light here so we can get a better view and example on what's going on here as we are now walking in. And this is, this is incredible. This is really, really, really incredible. Wow. This is really, if I can get, get you just to stand right over there. Yeah, exactly. This is something. And we're going to get a chance, as I'm speaking to you folks, I'm going to close up the curtain a little bit here so we can get a little bit of that darkness in here. What is the piece that is behind you right now? Actually, I'm going to ask you if you can just move over to the side on this side here. Perfect. 
and I'm just going to turn the camera over so we can see a bit of you there. Beautiful. What's the piece that we see here right now? Uh, I call this series Canoe People. Uh, this one I also call Tricksters or Spirit Geography. Uh, and uh, my background is primarily Celtic. And if you go back 4,000 years, some of the spiritual contact, uh, contact in that culture is not dissimilar to contemporary First Nations cultures. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm using this process, and these are two sides of an old canoe. And then when I peel it off and open it up, it almost starts looking like a butterfly. Or in this case, uh, I always think of couples. I actually thought angel wings when I looked at it. And they look like angel wings, and there is this spiritual quality. And in dim light, it isn't an accident that I compose it on my studio floor. These are the cuts in the concrete. I've also scattered porcupine quills embedded in it. And there's, there's a certain sense of, let's say we're in a confessional. Let's say my studio is a bit of a cathedral, a Mennonite barn cathedral, if you went there, or something like that. And let's say that we have a cultural history that we need to look at in terms of our relationship to nature. And so I use old canoes because then what you've got is a symbol that's covering about 100 years of history in Canada, right? But I would like to work with boats all over the world because in every culture there are these, I'd like to be doing something with the Canoe Museum in Peterborough which has a collection of these indigenous, these craft from all over the world. So yeah, they look like angel wings, they look like a couple, the thoughts are flying out the backs of their heads while they're kind of looking at each other in front. Canoes have this real couple kind of uh, sense that uh, this is what we do, you go with your wife or your girlfriend or your buddies or whatever and you go connect to the landscape in a way that doesn't happen in a car or an airplane or any other way because you're, you come about as close to becoming your own animal on the water as you can come. It, there's no separation anymore, you know, between... So it had these cuts, because I'm taking a three-dimensional form and I'm making it flat, that also look kind of like antlers, or maybe little bits of rivers or a map. This looks kind of like an eye. This looks kind of like an evil grin. That's why I called this one Tricksters. Anselm Kiefer is an artist that I admire a great deal who has influenced me. There are some elements in this piece that relate to him. Uh, so yeah, it's an extensive series. There's one in the window, there's more in my studio, and for some reason, people have started giving me their old 75 or 100 year canoe, even if they don't know what's gonna happen to them. They go, will you take my old canoe? You know, because the only thing most people could imagine doing with it is to make shelves. But like, I'm making these, so. Yeah. I'm not going to let anybody else see any more. I think they have to come here to the List Gallery to see to the I exhibit. Think you should show them this one. I'm going to show them just for a quick second. Quick second, because I don't want to give too much away on this. Don't even describe it. I don't want you to describe it. I want them to come down to see this. And how long is the exhibit going to be here for? It's through Valentine's Day. Through Valentine's Day. It's yeah. through. Folks want to get in touch with you. Is there a website or, or anything they can go to? Well, they can go to the List website and see all the work and some process videos of how it's made. They can go to my website, which is Richard Watts, Watts with an S, sculpture.com, or just Google me, Richard Watts Toronto Artist. And they can go to that website, and there are process videos as well uh, on there, as well as uh, images of the work. Fantastic.